So here, once again, is Dr. Deemer. You remember Dr. Deemer, the guy with the meteorites? So he breaks up these meteorites, he pulls out the molecules, and finds out that from the molecules of meteorites, we can make vesicles. In our food testing lab, we found out that all food contains basically the same stuff. We've got carbohydrates, lipids, and you guessed it, proteins. Let's analyze some more of this food stuff we call polymers. Have this page ready to go. These students have volunteered. Seriously, I haven't paid them a dime. They're gonna eat a cracker. They're not gonna swallow it, they're just gonna chew the cracker. Go ahead and chew. Keep chewing. We'll call this test the saliva test. Observations, it tasted sweet. Conclusions, there's gotta be sugar there. The iodine test is next. Now we know that iodine tests for carbohydrates. Let's see what happens here. So the iodine turned black, which means there's definitely carbohydrates here. And there's also sugars. I see a trend. Let's record these results once again. So our test is iodine, observations as it turned black, and once again, we know we have carbohydrates. Here's our good buddy, Dr. Deemer. He's gonna take sugar, and he's gonna add sulfuric acid to it. Let's take a look and see what happens. Dr. Deemer is now going to use this glass plate to generate more observations. First, he'll show you how this glass plate is going to fog up. This is the water that you make. We talked about this before. Notice how the sugar sulfuric acid combination is changing tremendously. Let's hold the glass plate over the top and see what develops. So that was the sulfuric acid test. In this test, we saw an awful lot of black developing, and we saw a lot of foggy material develop on the glass plate. As it turns out, the black material is pure carbon, and that foggy stuff is in fact water. So now we're gonna burn some lipids. Vegetable oil is a lipid. So we have a petri dish with vegetable oil in it and we've stuck a wick in the middle of it. Let's see what happens above the burning lipid. Let's record these results as well. So we have a peanut now. The peanut is full of proteins. We're gonna light this peanut on fire. So life is made of the same basic stuff. We're looking once again at polymers being made up of monomers. Let's start in this lower left-hand quadrant with carbohydrates. That's the polymer. This polymer of carbohydrates are made of the monomers, and the monomers are known as sugars. 
We can also write glucose, one of our simple sugars we've talked about many times before, and another simple sugar called fructose. But these are the monomers that make up the polymer we call carbohydrates. These monomers are made of smaller molecules. These molecules we can look at as being carbon dioxide and water. And yes, carbon dioxide and water we can further break down into the main elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Cho. So carbohydrates are made of cho. Another polymer are the proteins. The proteins are made of simpler molecules, the monomers once again. These are called amino acids. There are only 20 in the whole universe, the same 20 amino acids for all of life. The amino acids are made of smaller molecules once again, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, water, and we can also consider hydrogen sulfide. If you've ever burned a peanut, you'll notice this sulfide type smell. That's where it comes from. The elements that make up proteins are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and of course, solar, chons. Proteins are made of chons. Our last polymer is the lipid. The monomers that make up lipids are glycerol, fatty acids, and if we're looking at cell membranes, we also have the phospholipids, so we could write down phosphates here as well. Now, technically speaking, lipids are not really polymers, but we want to get across the idea that they're made of smaller molecules, so we'll call them polymers for now. And when you go to AP Chem, they may call them something different. These monomers, once again, are made of smaller molecules, water, and carbon dioxide. So the lipids then, looking at the elements, are made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus. Chop. Cho, chons, and chop. Out of 92 naturally occurring elements, only a small number are being used for life itself. These are known as the biogenic elements. Carbon is the most important element for living things, and here's why. Carbon has the ability to form four bonds. That means it can make millions and millions of different kinds of molecules. And yet, only a small number of molecules are needed for life itself. 